This week I uh, had to glue a couple of boards together and I got thinking about how simplistic this is in nature. You put some clamps on it and a lot of times you'll notice a lot of woodworkers like myself will put some heavy weight on and I looked around my shop and I had a coffee can that was full of uh, nails and screws and old washers. The thing was like 10 pounds. It was perfect. But the reason that made it perfect was not just the weight, because I could have filled this with water or something and you know, maybe stacked a bunch up, which you could do, because they are stackable. And so that's pretty cool for these crazy coffee cans. <laughs> but what I found out was, uh, I noticed was, in the past, sometimes when I need something like really super heavy dead weight, a lot of times you go with the metal. And the problem I've run into in the past that really messes up your work is I, a lot of times I will get rusty metal and throw it on top of good work, which is just big no-no. When we come back, Coffee and Tools, episode 35. Yeah. So this week I wanted to really take a look at Craig and some of their uh, tools, but the, I wanted to try their most basic uh, pocket joint kit. The kit only sells for just I think a little under $20, so it's a very inexpensive kit to buy. And it really allows you a lot of really cool stuff to do. Uh, now what I did here, as you can see, is with this piece of lumber, this was a test and I, I I did, this was just the first try, didn't work. The second try did work, amazing. But the next problem I had was a failure with the screws. Uh, this is just a, so, a pine. It's just a two by four piece of two by four pine, so it's kind of what I would call soft wood. The inch and a quarter wasn't deep enough to give me strength to make a respectable joint here uh, to really you know hold this in tight. So I moved up to the next size that Craig offers, which is inch and a half. Uh, and the inch and a half uh, screw was deep enough, which is right there. Uh, let's see if, uh, see if you can show that to you. That's about the same level, yeah, same angle roughly as what that screw is inside the lumber right now. And that sort of gives you an idea as to what, you know, how much. All the thread is basically in the lumber pretty much. This, the, the smooth shank part of the screw is what's in this lumber here, helping to hold this board in place. So the connection, I was trying the strength of it to see how strong it is. Uh, one of the problems, other problems I ran into was I used an impact gun. And I've noticed in the past a lot of people are sort of steering away from using an impact gun with these. And I, I can sort of understand it. The, my first try, the impact gun uh, actually stripped the lumber uh, out and the, of course the screw was soft and came out. So the, there was a couple of problems. That was only half inch. Now technically, if we look at the manual uh, that came with this, uh, the half inch lumber, for example, this has to have a quarter of an inch overhang off the end and be clamped to get the proper pocket hole joint made with their, uh, the form they've got here. So other than that, uh, the big thing to watch for is these screws are number two, are as uh, Craig says they are, but the fact is they are actually a number two Robertson, which was invented in Canada by a fellow by the name of Robertson. It's a square head screw, square head bit, and they've been around forever, very long time. They still are a very good idea because when you hook the screw into a square head uh, like that, they've always been really good. Look at that. I mean, that's not even magnetized, I don't believe, but the thing is it's, it's holding, and so you can you know drive that screw in. The other thing I needed to buy right away was this six inch bit. Uh, the shorter one that uh, Craig offers and some other uh, online sellers, this one didn't work. The problem was when you're doing a job like this, your screw is so tight to here that I actually didn't have the proper amount of space to get in here to drive the screw in correctly and see what I was doing. So I actually decided to go ahead and buy this now. 
The problem, of course, now is when you have this on here, if depending on what you're building, you might find you don't have you know enough space back here to get into a pocket joint. So there's there's good and I, I guess there's bad. It's 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 all about you know what the tool can do for you and what kind of projects you have. But it's pretty strong and that was only two screws. And again, like I said, we we tried you know the strength test to see what, how the connection was. Uh, I've always maintained or liked uh, biscuit joining and other types of connections, but but this uh, this is really good. The big thing that I saw that I felt was it's the, it's all about the screw. Get the the deepest screw you can. This of course it's not going to come out the other side of the work, and use of course Craig screws. I would imagine because I really didn't see anything else that would fit these pocket holes once you make them. But um, that was about it. Hey. Glad you came by at Coffee and Tools, and hopefully you'll have a great week, and next week, another topic. Bye for now.